Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Starting a business takes a lot of planning and preparation and even then it's an uncertain endeavor. For some students at the University of Vermont, a new funding opportunity is giving them support to take their ideas to the next level and get their businesses off the ground. Rebecca Gollin tells us about the innovative program. Do we like the number of six? Do we want to increase it to give, you know? There's a new resource for the University of Vermont's up and coming entrepreneurs. The Catamount Innovation Fund is UVM's first student-run venture catalyst program. Medical student Al Marquez is one of the co-founders of the Catamount Innovation Fund. We're a completely student-run team. All of the operations, all of the investments, all of the uh, consulting is done by UVM, current UVM students. And Student, current students, whether graduate or undergraduate, as well as alumni of up to five years, uh, are eligible to apply. Teams applied to be part of a year-long program where they're paired with an undergraduate business analyst who helps them develop their idea. The money to support the ventures comes from UVM alumni. Throughout the year, the students are provided with resources and small grants to get their businesses off the ground. And at the end of the year, those teams are eligible for up to $10,000 for further development. It's on the computer, whereas like people like to hold physical products or see like a service, especially one. Throughout the time, I mentioned we provide a lot of resources in terms of workspace, uh, funding for prototype development. Uh, we have workshops led by local members of the startup community. Uh, and at the end, teams will be rewarded with money to help them reach their next and final milestone uh, in the accelerator program. Mm -hmm. In the first but year of the program, 24 teams applied and six were selected. Those who participated had a variety of business ideas and products ranging in stages of development. They're here at UVM's Davis Center to share the culmination of their work for the year in a demo day. So why not make a bigger stress on collaboration while we're still in school? Our project is pretty preliminary, so the brunt of our work so far has been uh, seeing what's out there, like who is doing something similar to what we're doing, um, how do we progress forward, like before developing, do you wireframe, do you prototype, um, getting in contact with people who've been through this before. Like Marquez, Sam Logan and the other members of his team are medical students. They're developing a mobile app that seeks to streamline information and increase efficiency for patients as they're discharged from the hospital. You might be sick, you might be just tired and stressed out, you might even be on drugs. And either way, it's not really fair for you to have to comprehend everything that you need to know. Um, and not being able to do your wound care as best as you can, maybe missing a couple drug doses, uh, something as simple as that can really hurt your recovery and your care. So we hope to take those discharge notes and organize them better. Put them on your phone so you can see everything by appointment. So you can search by like contraindication of like this medication or all of your medications. So not so much pressure is put on that few moments, those like five minutes where you just need to understand everything. So you can go home and you can work with your care better. For Logan and his team, working with their business analyst help them keep track of the big picture. They help you with things that, I mean, as a med student, I'm not really familiar with. They help us get in contact with mentors. That's not something that I've really had to do in this setting before. Uh, they helped us do market research, also something that was quite opaque. They helped us refine our processes, which is something that I never thought I would say, um, in that I have a team of three people. Should we all be doing the same thing? Should we be doing different things? Should, how do we be more efficient? And they really helped us with that. I knew I had some tools that I could help them with, but I also knew that I would take a lot out of it, like you would with an internship or something like that. Julia Campanella is one of the student business analysts working with the fund. She was paired with a different team who is developing an opioid risk assessment tool. It was a new topic for Campanella. 
because it was something totally outside of anything I knew about. Uh, being a business major with a studio art minor, I don't do anything uh, medical related, but I've always found it to be really interesting, especially uh, the drug um, epidemic that's going on right now. The opioid epidemic is, some, is, is something that doesn't only affect drug dealers or our typical person. It affects everyone we know. Before I introduce our Campanella product, helped the team network with business and medical professionals in the area to develop their idea and begin bringing it to fruition. The team is now working with a programmer to create a basic version of their tool that they will then be able to pitch to potential clients. And at the end of the experience, Campanella says she has taken a lot away. It's done a few things for me. It's first of all helped me meet students uh, here at UVM that I wouldn't normally meet, which has been really big for me and connecting with people who have similar interests and that's definitely enhanced my own experience at UVM. Um, it's also helped me co connect with a lot of people in the local area and professors that I wouldn't normally work with and that's been really cool just to get ideas from them even for things like future career goals and jobs and stuff like that. I've definitely opened a lot of doors uh, through being involved with the fund. Offering students a real-world experience while they're still in school is invaluable. This offering is filling the need of how can we keep those students who, on the one hand, want to learn about entrepreneurship but, and want a real live experience. It's one thing to watch Shark Tank on TV. It's another thing to be the shark in the room actually making the decisions about who gets the funding to go forward. Eric Munson is the faculty advisor for the group. He's been impressed with the progress he's seen the teams make over the year. On the one hand, the analysts are people who are interested in entrepreneurship, uh, but they're not ready to take the dive just yet. So it gives them a lot of experience on the investment side of the table and the decisions making the training side of the table. Very valuable skills, but f there's this other cohort of students, the folks we saw tonight, who had ideas and were ready to run with those ideas this year. Um, then I developed the universal binding attachment and uh, wrote a provisional patent application, and I'm extremely excited to announce that as of today, um, the provisional patent has been filed. Um, for some participants, the experience has opened their eyes to their options for when they leave school. Business student Campanella is now contemplating a future as an entrepreneur. The takeaway from working with the fund and then I also happen to have started a research assistant position this semester as well with a professor in the business school. The culmination of the tools that I've learned from the both of them have made me realize this is a field I want to go into, which I would have not known about six months ago. So that's been really exciting for me, really exploring kind of who I am and what my interests are. Uh, it's definitely helped take away something that I didn't know would come about. Build experience and be able to start for me, it's a way to uh, kind of integrate with medicine and like look at it from an entirely different perspective and that's a component of um, I want that to be a component of my career like uh, going forward um, so it's been really cool to be able to do that it's a taste of real-world business experience for these UVM students as they start their careers in Burlington I'm Rebecca Gollin with across the fence Thank you, Rebecca. I'm joined now by Professor Eric Munson. He's the faculty advisor for the Catamount Innovation Fund, and he teaches in UVM's Grossman School of Business, as well as the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Alongside Professor Munson is Al Marquez. As we saw in the video, Al is a medical student at UVM and was one of the co-founders of the fund. Thanks so much for coming in. Eric, is the Innovation Fund something that UVM needed? Definitely. This was, this was a missing piece in the puzzle. We have on the one hand, we have classroom experiences, which give people the, the fundamental skills. Mm -hmm. We have an entrepreneurship club for people who are interested in becoming entrepreneurs at some point in time. But we didn't really have a funding, uh, funding vehicle, a way to provide funds to people who actually want to start businesses right now. And that was a very important piece, which the students created all by themselves. So uh, you're one of the co-founders of the fund. Who were the other co-founders, and what do you have to do to get things up and running for this fund? I was introduced to a team of then undergraduate students, Andrew Dazzo, Jason Lucci, Andrew Percoco, Dan Copen, and Jake Guarino uh, in the fall of 2016. And at that time, we had met several times over the next few months to develop the concept of the Catamount Innovation Fund. Once we got approval from the university administration, we worked with the UVM Foundation to develop our funding structure. We recruited our full-time team 
uh, built our pool of resources from both the UVM and local startup communities, as well as identifying and trying to recruit entrepreneurial talent from the UVM campus to apply to our accelerator program that launched last November. So a lot developed within a year. Yeah, you, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so we heard about a couple of the projects in the video. What are some of the other ventures and teams that took part this year? We had a very strong diversity of teams in our inaugural cohort. Mm -hmm. One was uh, Mag Snowboard Bindings, founded right. by UVM uh, freshman engineering student Jane Carradine. Jane in his spare time worked as a snowboard instructor and he recognized that his beginner level students had a difficult time clicking into their bindings. So he wanted, he developed a technology with uh, magnetism that could simplify the click in process and when he came to the CIF uh, he, with his simple prototype we helped him refine that prototype design as well as introduced him to some legal support that could help protect his now patent pending technology. And so, Eric, what's the value of outside the classroom learning like this? Well, part of it is, and I have to, I remember when Jane first came to my office in the fall with his idea, and Catamount Innovation Fund was just starting, so we're able to put him into this experience. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible a year ago. So I have to thank the students for putting it together. The other, in terms of the valuableness, as we saw this in the video segment, is that we have art students and business students and engineering students and medical students all working together on a common goal, which they wouldn't have done before. Before, they would have been in their respective silos. Right. And some of the special interactions which have happened over the past year wouldn't have happened otherwise. And so why is it important that universities help students create their own jobs while they're still in school? <laughs> well, as a lot of us know, finding a job, if you, want, if you come to Vermont and want to stay in Vermont is hard. Um, despite the low unemployment figures, that just means there aren't that many jobs out there. Um, and so for those who want to stay, creating your own job is important. But a lot of folks through their university education are trained for the corporate world. Or for, or for public service, and they're not trained to be their own boss. And if we can help them get over the anxiety of being your own boss, about being your own sales force, your own cafe brewer, your all, all what it takes to run a business, then they'll be more likely to do it, and they'll be more likely to be successful, because starting your own business is risky. You could lose money, you could lose your family's money, you could use your friend's money. And so if we can help them to be more successful, then they feel worse about putting them into this very yeah. dangerous situation. Well, it is a lot of work and it's a lot of pressure. I mean, don't, don't you find that as far as some of the projects that you've seen these people working on? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge hurdle. I mean, what I would say to myself, I'm just gonna go back to bed, forget it. Well, a lot of these students are here to get degrees. And so part of, part of our challenge is how do we help them be successful both as students and as entrepreneurs. We're good at helping our student athletes become successful both as students and athletes, but how do we do it in terms of students and entrepreneurs? So Al, you had some uh, recent fundraising success. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we, on our, in our first year, we survived on a $10,000 uh, gift from a UVM alumnus, Sandy Wakeman. Mm -hmm. And within the last month, we were able to triple that uh, gift support. We struck a deal with the Student Government Association to support us uh, $10,000 for the next three years. And university administration matched that. So and in addition, we received another private gift from a UVM alumnus, Nate Bosshart. Uh, so now we have $30,000 to invest in our future uh, entrepreneurial talent. And with that, with as time progresses and we see the success stories uh, that come out of CIF, we hope that both the alumni of UVM and friends of UVM uh, will want to support us, whether it be financially or in the form of mentorship or other professional services provided. Mm -hmm. Eric, are there potential downsides to encouraging students to create startup businesses? Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, I think yes, um, the businesses could fail. And half of most businesses fail in the, next, in, the, in the first five years. So the question is, how do we pr prepare them best so that they don't fail, or that they're less likely to fail, or that when they do fail, that they learn from their experiences and move on? And part of it, I think, is building robust teams of people from multiple disciplines, from art, from business, from medicine, so that all these different perspectives are focused on the issue instead of seeing it just from the medical perspective or just from the business perspective. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to be sort of the model going forward for a lot of students who are going to college now or, or thinking along these lines? Absolutely. I, I think we, they can't just consider their education. They have to think, you know, 10 years down the road and developing their plan and how they're going to survive in terms financially. So I think if, if they can develop that during college and, you know, understand how to fail quickly, and that will help them in the future. Well, a lot of these students are also watching things like Shark Tank, mm -hmm. and they're coming up with these ideas. Take Jane and Mag Bindings, for example. He just finished his first year at UVM. We are not prepared, or we're getting prepared now, to handle students who are coming out of high school with their own business ideas. And if we can then 
leveraging what we've learned through the Catamount Innovation Fund this, this past year, work on improving the university system to accept and support these students who are coming out of high school with amazing ideas. Um, they'll have, they'll be able to create their own jobs, they'll be able to create their own jobs here in Vermont going forward. Well, that's wonderful. I want to thank you for joining me today. For more information about the Catamount Innovation Fund, you can check the website. We've listed it on your screen. It's catamountfund.squarespace.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having Thank you. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.